Okay, today we're actually going to be talking about the second derivative, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, how that affects a graph and a function. So if a function is concave up, it means it is bending upwards. So this is concave up. On the other hand, something like this is not concave up. Um, even though they both open upwards, this is not bending. Um, whereas here, you can see that the slopes are getting higher and higher, and the slopes are changing. Here, there's just what's called a cusp, but there's no actual bending. Um, this is also bending up, even though it's not a full uh, parabola. Um, so concave up is when something is bending upwards. It's like if you took your pencil and like bent it, and hopefully you don't break it. Concave down, of course, is when something is bending downwards. Looks like this. And we're going to call this the fun chart because we have F, U, N, and it spells fun. Um, now, if something is bending upwards, how does its derivative look? Well, if something is bending upwards, what's happening is its derivative is getting higher and higher and higher. So what the derivative looks like is the derivative is increasing in value. So maybe the slope is negative, but it's getting less negative and then it's zero. Um, so it might look like this and then it's positive. So that's that's what these slopes are doing. They're actually, the slopes are getting higher and higher and higher. Maybe the slope is negative two and then negative one and then zero and then one and then two, um, but the slopes are getting higher, okay? If something is concave down, then f prime, the slopes, will be decreasing. I'm going to put increasing, and I'm going to put decreasing. If a function is concave up, then its slopes will be increasing. And if the slope is increasing, then the second derivative, which is the derivative of the derivative, is going to be positive. Um, and this is true because if something is increasing, then its derivative is positive. And f prime is increasing, and so the derivative of f prime is positive. Um, we, we see it has a positive slope. Similarly, if f prime is negative, then f prime, uh, then the derivative of f prime will be uh, negative. If, this is if f prime is decreasing, then f prime prime will be negative. And so this is a useful connection. Um, between f and f prime, that if a function is concave up, it means its slopes are increasing. That's what bending upwards does. It means the slopes will be increasing. And we can see those slopes increasing. And if the slopes are increasing, then the derivative of the derivative must be positive. And this is often the easiest thing to see. Rather than checking to see if uh, the slopes are increasing, you just see if the slope of the slope is positive because it's really easy to check if something's positive. Okay, there is one more consequence of um, something being concave up, and that is the tangent lines. If something is concave up, the tangent lines will be below the actual function. They are be below the graph. And what that means is if you use them to estimate, remember we, we've used in homework 4.0, I believe, we use the tangent line to estimate the function value at a nearby point. And so because the function is bending upwards and a line is going straight, a tangent line is going straight, when you bend upwards, that concave up function will always end up above the tangent line. Um, so the tangent lines are below the graph of F um, and so if you use them to estimate, when estimating the tangent approximation will be an underestimate. Because remember how this works, right? We use the... Um, tangent line to estimate nearby, but that if, if you're plugging in a value into the tangent line, you're going to get a number lower than what the real value is because that function is bending upwards. Similarly, if something is concave down, if a function is concave down, then the tangent line will always be above the graph.
And if a tangent line is above the graph of f, then it will be an overestimate if you use it to estimate. So um, those are some things. We're gonna be using the second derivative over the next two days, the next two lessons, to really like get more in depth about how a function can be changing. It's quite useful. Um, we almost never use the third derivative, um, but the second derivative is quite useful. An inflection point. What a point of inflection is, is where the concavity changes from being concave so the concavity changes. So here, I hope you guys can see this part is concave down, but this part is concave up. This is called an inflection point because um, it changed from being concave down to concave up. Think of the cubic parent function, which looks like this. Um, it never stops increasing. It's increasing the whole time, but it switches from being concave down at some point to concave up. Um, and so, you know, even if something doesn't change directions, it can change concavity. Um, now, what does that look like? Well, for a function, it looks like this, where you can see the concavity changing. If you are looking at the derivative, and the derivative changes direction, so f prime changes direction, then that tells you that there's an inflection point, because if the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing, then the concavity must have changed from concave up to concave down, and so there's an inflection point. If you see that the derivative changes from decreasing to increasing, then the uh, concavity must have changed from concave down to concave up. Okay. The second derivative. If you see that the second derivative changes sign, so if the second derivative changes sign, it means you have a point of inflection. Um, and that's because, you know, if the, if the second derivative was positive, the function was concave up, and if it changes signs to negative, well, it's changed to concave down. If the second derivative was negative and it changes signs to positive, well, now all of a sudden you're at concave up. So we're going to be making a sign chart with the second derivative to see where there are inflection points, and you'll see this in a second. So let's see how this looks. Let's talk about an example. Determine where f is concave up or concave down. And the easiest thing is just looking at the second derivative and seeing what the sign is. We're going to make a sign chart here. So go ahead and find the second derivative here. What is the second derivative of f of x? And we'll use it to talk about concavity. It's always easiest to talk about concavity if we can find the second derivative. So hopefully you found that the first derivative, um, we multiply by the power. So negative 3x squared and lower the power by 1 multiply by the power and lower the power by one, the derivative of a constant is zero. And then the second derivative is just the derivative of the derivative. So we'll multiply by the power and lower the power by one, and the derivative of six x is just six. Now what we wanna know is when is the function concave up or concave down? And that's like asking when is the second derivative above zero, and when is the second derivative below zero? When is it positive versus when is it negative? And we can do that just like we did with the, the first derivative by making a sign chart and seeing where the second derivative is zero. Um, so we're going to solve and get negative 6x equals negative 6, x equals 1. This is where f prime prime equals zero is when x equals negative 1. And we're going to make a sign chart here. And we're not looking at the sign of f prime anymore. We're looking at the sign of f prime prime. What's the second derivative sign? And uh, we need to be a little bit careful with our labeling. Uh, just like before, we're going to skip uh, a space and put the first place where it's 0. So when x is 1, the second derivative is 0, and we're going to test a point to the left and to the right. When we pick a point to the left of 1, like, I don't know, 0 or something, and we plug it into the second derivative, uh, we get 0 plus 6 is 6, which is a positive. Um, when I pick a number to the right of 1, um, like 2, I'll get negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6, which is a negative. This shows me that I found the only place where it's 0, and so it'll never switch signs from positive to negative except for here. And so I can tell where f is concave up and concave down. f is concave up when the second derivative is positive. f is concave down when the second derivative is negative. So we're going to justify here. We're going to say f is concave up on um, the interval from negative infinity to 1 
because, I actually think we use parentheses here. Um, we usually don't include the endpoint as being either concave up or concave down. Um, like when we did increasing and decrease, we included the endpoint, but for concavity, we don't. Um, F is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to one because uh, F prime prime is greater than zero, right? So that's where the second derivative was positive. Try the second one on your own. Where is F concave down? Try to write out the sentence on your own that's like this. F is, ooh, sorry, F is concave down on the interval from one to infinity because f prime prime is less than zero. Now, um, let's look at a graph here. And I wanna look at a couple of things here um, to kind of make some connections. If we have x cubed plus three x squared minus two, when we graph it, we will see, okay, hold on, let's make my window go from negative five to five. Let's go from negative five to 10. And I think we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, we can see that it was concave up to begin with. And you can see right around x equals one, it's switching from being concave up to concave down. And that's what we found here. Let's look at a graph of the derivative. We, we graph the derivative, let's graph um, f prime of x. Negative three x squared plus six x. And what we'll see is that f prime of x was increasing until um, x was one, and then it began decreasing. So when x was, when f prime was increasing, the function was concave up. When x was, when f prime was decreasing, the function became concave down. Now notice that um, as soon as, like we can also see that when f prime is positive, f was increasing. But now we're also looking at whether f is f prime is increasing or decreasing because it's telling you how the second what the second derivative is. The second derivative is positive, and we'll see that here. Let's look at this. Oh no, I didn't mean to delete that. Nope, plus six x. Let's look at the second derivative, which is negative six x plus six, and you'll see that at one, that's where the second derivative switched from being positive to negative. So there's a connection between all of these um, and it has to do with the slopes, right? So really what you wanna have in your head is that the easiest way to tell if something is concave up or concave down is using the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, the function is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, the function is concave down. The second derivative being positive means that the derivative is increasing because the second derivative is the derivative of, the, this is f prime prime. And so f prime uh, being increasing means that f prime prime is positive. Okay, so why don't you guys try one on your own? Um, say where this function is concave up or concave down, um, and we'll see how you did. Hopefully you started by finding the second derivative. So to see if it's concave up or concave down, the easiest thing is to find the second derivative. And we first start by finding the derivative. The derivative of the derivative is just two. And since f prime prime, this is saying the second derivative is always two, two is always above zero, two is never gonna be negative. And so what our sign chart looks like, if we were to make a sign chart, is that like it's always positive. It doesn't really matter where we are. The second derivative is always gonna be positive. And so the answer is that f is always concave up. And the justification is because f prime prime is greater than zero, right? f is always concave up because the second derivative is greater than zero. Um, or we can look at the first derivative. y equals 2x minus 1 looks like this. The first derivative is always increasing, and so the function is concave up. Or you know what quadratics look like. This is a quadratic with a uh, positive value of a, it's always concave up. So all of these things match up with our knowledge. Um, the, the quickest thing and the most common thing we do is we just look at the second derivative and see if it's po where it's positive. Okay, let's look at number three. We wanna see where this function is concave up or concave down. So start by finding the second derivative. And this is a little tricky, but I hope you were able to find the first derivative using, you have to use the quotient rule because these are dividing. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom left alone minus 
we leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Let's simplify the top sum. This is um, x minus 1 minus x, which is just negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. Now this is the derivative. We want the second derivative. So the derivative of this, you know, we can actually use a chain rule. We don't have to use quotient rule anymore if we want. We can use, this is, um, this is negative x minus one to the negative two, and we can use the chain rule here. So we can multiply by negative two and get positive two x minus one to the negative third power. So we multiply by the power lower the power down by one, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, but the derivative of the inside is just one. And so we get two over x minus one cubed. Now you could have done the, um, you could have done the quotient rule as well, but it would have required more work to simplify it. Uh, and, and this is the simplified version. So here's the um, second derivative. So what's gonna go in our sign chart? What's our critical value here? Well, in this case, the second derivative is never going to be zero, but it's going to be undefined when x equals one. And so that's what's going to go in our sign chart. So when x equals one, the second derivative is undefined, and that is a place where it could switch sides. So we're going to test a point to the left of negative of one, like zero. Um, we get a positive divided by a um, zero minus one is negative one, negative one cubed is a negative, a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And when we pick a number bigger than one, like two, um, we get a positive, because two is always positive, and two minus one is a positive, a positive cubed is a positive, a positive divided by a positive is a positive. And so we get that the second derivative is negative to the left of one and positive to the right of one. And so we can now say where f is concave up and concave down. Uh, go ahead and do that. So f is concave up on 1 to infinity because what? Well, it's concave up because f prime prime is greater than 0. f is concave down on negative infinity to 1 because f prime prime is less than 0. And if we graph it, we'll see this. If we graph um, this would all be done without a calculator, by the way. Like, uh, this would definitely be on the no calculator section of the AP exam. So uh, when you graph it, we'll see, there's this line here that's just the calculator having a problem. The function is concave down up until x equals 1, and then it's concave up to the right of 1. Um, so it's bending upwards or bending downwards. All right, last one. Um, here, f prime equals e to the negative x. Okay, I want to talk about two ways to do it. Um, first, I want you to uh, do it by finding the second derivative. What is the second derivative? Well, the second derivative is the, der we already have the derivative. We're just doing the derivative of the derivative. This is e to the something. We're gonna have to use the chain rule. E, the derivative of e to the something is e to that same thing times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of negative x is negative one. So we get negative e to the negative x. Um, we should know that exponentials are always positive. So e to the negative x, you should know, looks like this. It's exponential decay. Um, and negative e to the negative x, then, will always be a negative. It'll get reflected. Um, it's the negative of a positive, and so it'll always equal a negative. And since the second derivative is always negative, um, we know that f is always concave uh, down. Now, hold on, something's wrong. What's wrong? What did I do here? The second derivative is negative. F is concave. Oh, right. <laughs> I was thinking that this was f of x, and I was like, that's not a concave down function. Okay. Um, so another way we could look at this is just by thinking about what f prime of x looks like. So f prime of x looks like is e to the negative x, and you should know that's exponential decay. So e to the negative x looks like this. And e to the negative x is always decreasing, and when the derivative is decreasing, that tells you that uh, f is concave down. So I think this is a little bit tricky, but when the second derivative is positive, something's concave up, or when the derivative is increasing, something's concave up. It's telling you about how a function is bending.
and we'll use this next class. Um, there's a really cool way of, uh, an, an easy way often of finding whether something's a local minimum or a maximum by just like looking at whether something's concave up because local minimums are always concave up and local maximums are concave down. So it, it's gonna give us an easy way. Um, determine the points of inflection. What's a point of inflection again? It's where the concavity changes. And the easiest way to check, usually, is F prime prime changes sign, okay? We gotta be a little bit careful here. Um, a lot of, the, the number one mistake kids make when they're doing inflection points is they'll be like, where is F prime prime equal to zero? And they'll say, that's where the concavity changes sign. Well, it might be, but you need to actually check to make sure it does change signs. Um, also, another way we could ch check it is if F prime changes direction, but that's often way harder to do. Um, these are the same thing, just written differently. F prime prime changes sign or F prime changes direction. We'll usually just find F prime prime and see, make a sign chart. It's the easiest way to do it. So, um, where does F prime prime change sign? Find the point of inflection here. I want you to try this on your own. So, what you should have done is found F prime of x. 12x squared. And the reason we found f prime of x is because we need to find f prime prime of x. What's the second derivative? That's 12x squared minus 24x. And we want to know where this changes sign. We're going to make a sign chart just like we did before by finding where it's equal to zero. So we're going to factor out the common factor. And we find that x equals zero and x equals two are where the second derivative equals zero. And these might be inflection points, but we need to actually check a sign chart. This is, again, the number one mistake students do year after year on inflection points is they assume that where it's equal to zero um, is always an inflection point, and that's not always true. So um, we check a number to the left of zero, a number to the left of zero being like negative one or something, and we'll get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. I'm going to use red here. So when we put in negative 1, we'll get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. When we put in a number between 0 and 2, like 1, we'll get a um, positive times a negative, which is a negative. And if we pick a number bigger than 2, like 7, I don't know, we'll get a positive times a positive. 7 minus 2 is a positive. And a positive times a positive is a positive. And we can see that the second derivative changed sign from positive to negative, and then it changed sign from negative to positive. So F has a point of inflection. Oh man, that's awful handwriting. Inflection when X equals zero or two because F prime prime changes sign. So at x equals zero and x equals two, the second derivative changed sign. Okay, and so there's an inflection point there. So we've answered the question. And this is the justification. F prime prime changes sign. Um, if you had a graph of the derivative, we could also say, and you know, like if we graphed this, like let me graph the derivative, which, you know, maybe they would give you a graph. I don't know. They wouldn't here. Uh, but we want to be comfortable with this as well. If you had a graph, you could tell that at x equals 0 and at, let me uh, change my window a little bit to be actually be able to see it. At x equals 0 and at x equals 2, you'll notice that the derivative changed direction. f prime changed from increasing to decreasing and then changed from decreasing to increasing. And so f prime changed direction at the inflection points, whereas f prime prime changed sign from positive to negative or negative to positive there. Uh, if, I, if I graphed um, f prime prime, we'll see it will change sign at the place. It'll change from positive to negative or negative to positive at zero and at two, just like this one changed directions at zero. Okay, try this one on your own. Um, find the point of inflection so where's the point of inflection? So to do it, you needed to find the derivative and the second derivative. So 12x squared. 
The only place this is equal to zero is at x equals zero. And so let's look at how the sign changes in f prime prime. Well, when we pick a number to the left of zero, like negative one, um, negative one squared is a positive, 12 times a positive is a positive. When we pick a number bigger than zero, like one, uh, one squared is a positive, 12 times a positive is a positive. And we see that f prime prime is always positive. And so um, there is no point of inflection. Another thing for a point of inflection is called, uh, sometimes we'll say inflection point. It's where it changes how it's bending. There is no point of inflection for f of x. And the justification is because f prime prime does not change sign. So f prime prime never changes sign. It's positive, and then it's back to being positive. And so the function is always bending upwards. This is saying, hey, look, the function is bending upwards to the left of zero, and then it's still bending upwards to the right of zero. Um, and that's, in fact, what y equals x to the fourth looks like. Let's look at y equals x to the fourth. It was always bending upwards. And the second derivative never changes signs. Um, and that tells us that. All right, try it one on your own. The graph of f of x equals this has inflection points where? Try to find them. So to find the inflection points, we're looking for f prime prime. This is what you should translate it to. f prime prime changes sign. And that is, uh, so we need to find f prime prime. So f prime equals 6x to the fifth. We're just doing the power rule. Minus 20x to the third. The second derivative then is 30x to the fourth minus 60x squared, and we can factor out 30x squared. We wanna find where this is zero, we're gonna factor. So we're gonna factor out the common factor. So x squared minus two. And hopefully we feel comfortable factoring this difference of squares. I find it um, easiest to do it like this. Just say like, hey look, it's x plus, oh, this is wrong, x minus square root of two times x plus square root of two. Um, that's the difference of two squares. If you don't see that right away, you can always solve for where this is equal to zero. So you can say like, where does x squared minus two equal zero? And you add two to both sides and you take the square root. You do have to remember, you have to be very careful to take a positive or negative square root there. So let's make a sign chart. Because, you know, we can see the critical values are 0 square root of 2 and negative square root of 2, but um, we need to actually make sure they change signs. Um, so in order from smallest to biggest, negative square root of 2, then we skip a space, and we do 0, and we skip a space, and positive square root of 2, so negatives, then 0, then positive. A number to the left of negative square root of 2 would be like negative 10. Uh, negative 10 squared is a positive. Negative 10 minus square root of 2 is a negative. Negative 10 plus square root of 2 is also a negative because uh, negative 10 is bigger than square root of 2. And a positive times a negative times a negative is a positive because there's an even number of negatives. If we pick a number between negative 2, square root of negative 2 and uh, 0, like negative 1, we'll get a positive. Now, uh, a negative minus a negative is always a negative, and a negative plus a positive, well, the number we picked is smaller than square root of two, it's closer to zero, and so this one will end up being a positive because the positive square root of two is bigger than whatever number we picked between negative square root of two and zero. So we'll get positive times a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Uh, a number bigger than zero but smaller than square root of two, we'll get um, like one, so we'll get a positive, um, if it's bigger than zero, it's a positive number, but it's smaller than square root of two, so a positive number minus an even bigger negative number is still a negative, and a positive number plus a positive number is a positive. Positive times negative times positive is a negative. And if we pick a number bigger than square root of two, we'll get a positive times a positive now times a positive, um, which is a positive. I guess I should put zero here. Um, so where are the inflection points? Well, there's an inflection point here and here because that's where the sign changed. The sign did not change at x equals zero, which is why um, this answer was wrong.
and it's only A. This is the, the most, I, I guarantee you a ton of kids across the country missed this question on the AP exam the year it was on it and they put X equals zero um, because they didn't check to see if it changed signs. Now guys, there's a shortcut I wanna make sure we're familiar with, which is that if the multiplicity is an even number, it won't change signs there. So it's gonna change signs here and here because there's no power, but it won't change signs at this one because it has an exponent of two. If this were an exponent of three, it would change signs. If it was an exponent of four, it would not change signs. So remember that um, you know if there's an even multiplicity, it'll like bounce off and not change signs. Um, and so we actually like could have gotten away with not doing the sign chart and just factoring it and seeing what the power of each one was. And, and that would have been um, adequate. Okay. What are all the values of x for which y equals 2 over 4 minus x is concave down? Go ahead and do this on your own. How do you find whether it's concave down? Well, you need to find the second derivative. So uh, y prime equals, um, I'm going to treat this as a power rule rather than, a, you could do quotient rule, it's fine. But I'm going to say this is 2 times 4 minus x to the negative 1 power. Sorry, this is still y. I haven't actually done the derivative, I'm just rewriting it. And then I'm going to do, um, power rule with a chain rule inside of it. So it's, uh, we multiply by the power and then lower the power by one. This is getting ugly. And then we have to do times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of four minus X is negative one. The derivative of four is zero, but the derivative of four minus X is negative one. And so negative one times negative two is positive two. I haven't done the derivative again yet. This is still Y prime. I'm just rewriting by combining like terms. And now to do the derivative again, I multiply by the power, lower the power by one. And because this had something inside of it that wasn't just X, I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative one. Um, negative four times negative one is positive four over four minus X cubed. Okay, so the question is, where is it concave downward? And so the only places um, where this could change is at places where it's zero or undefined. Uh, the numerator will never be zero, and so this function will never be, the second derivative will never be zero, but it will be undefined at um, x equals four, because four minus four is zero. So when x is four, the second derivative is undefined. And so we want to check to the left of four and to the right of four. So like if I put in a number like three, I will get a positive divided by um, four minus three is a positive. Um, we get one, one cubed is positive. Positive divided by a positive is a positive. If we pick a number like five, some number to the right of four, um, four is still a positive, but now four minus five is a negative and a negative cubed, a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And so this function will be concave down when f prime prime is less than zero, and that will be everywhere to the right of four. So when x is greater than four. Um, so e. Okay, what are all the values of x for which this function is concave down? Try it on your own, but first start by thinking what is concave down? What's the easiest way to check it? Well, we want to see y prime prime is less than zero. It's negative, right? So we're going to find where y prime prime is negative. So y prime, this is an easy one. We're just going to do power rule. Find the second derivative, power rule. And where is this equal to zero so we can make a sign chart? Well, we're going to solve by moving the 12 over and dividing by six. And so the second derivative is going to be zero. Oops when x is two, when x is two, the second derivative is zero. When we pick a number to the left of uh, two, like, I don't know, one, six minus 12 is negative. But when we pick a number to the right of two, like three, we get 18 minus 12 is a positive. And so where is it concave down? Well, it's where f prime prime is less than zero. So it's when x is less than two. Hopefully you feel okay about that. Okay, um, this is asking us, what are all the x coordinates of the points of inflection? What are points of inflection? It's where f prime prime changes sign. And so we need to find f prime prime. Go ahead and do that. Um, this is a constant multiplier. I, I hope you recognize that this is just 5 sevenths x to the seventh. 
Um, dividing by a constant is the same as multiplying by a constant. Um, and so you're not going to have to do quotient rule. You just multiply uh, by the constant multiplier. So f prime is going to be multiplying by 7 and dividing by 7 cancel out. We lower the power by 1. 24x to the fifth. Multiply by the power. And the derivative of x is just 1. And the derivative of 1 is 0. The second derivative is 30x to the fifth plus, oh my god, 120x to the fourth, I believe, plus 120x to the third, and the derivative of this is zero. Now I need to um, factor, and they all have a 30 in common, and they also all have an x to the third in common. So f prime prime equals 30x to the third times what's left over. Well, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. This multiplies out to give us the original one, and this can be factored even more. So 30x cubed times x plus 2 times x plus 2. And I'm going to write this as 30x cubed times x plus 2 to squared. Because now, instead of making a sign chart, I can just tell where it's going to switch signs. So the two um, critical values are x equals 0, because that makes this one 0, and x equals negative 2. Does it actually switch signs at x equals 0? Yes, because it's to an odd power. So 0, it will switch signs, and there will be an inflection point. Does it actually switch signs at x equals negative 2? No, because it's squared, and so it has an even multiplicity, and so the answer is just x equals 0. Um, and you could confirm that by making a sign chart, like if you did f prime prime and put uh, negative 2 here and 0 here, and actually did it, you would see that it does not switch signs at negative 2, but does switch signs at x equals 0. All right, the last thing I want to look at, and this isn't on your notes, is it's very common for them to give you a graph of f prime, okay? They're going to give us a graph of f prime, and, you know, maybe the graph looks like this. So here's the graph of f prime, and then they ask you questions about f. So f. Where is f increasing? Not where is f prime increasing, where is f increasing? And so you translate, this is something we should know from before this lesson. We translate this into what statement about f prime? f is increasing when f prime is greater than zero. And so f prime is above zero, we're gonna call this a, we'll call this point b, and we'll call this point c. So f is increasing, on the interval from A to C, because that's where F prime is positive. What about where F is concave up? Well, the very first thing we should think of is F prime prime is greater than zero, right? Where is F prime prime positive? But we don't have F prime prime here. We have F prime. And so remember, this is also the same as F prime is increasing. Because if F prime is increasing, then the second derivative will be positive. This goes back to our fun chart at the beginning. If f prime is increasing, then f prime prime is positive, and so the function is concave up. So concave up, we're looking for where is f prime prime increasing, and that's all of this section until it hits its maximum. So this is going to be um, f is concave up on negative infinity to, um, oh man, this probably should have been in close brackets, doesn't matter that much. F is increasing from negative infinity up until B. So that's where F is concave up. So we gotta be careful to make sure we understand how to sort out whether we're talking about a slope or the concavity or something's just positive or whether it's increasing. And it takes some practice getting used to it, but I feel like I really want you to take one more look at this fun chart we made and, and see if it makes sense to you. And can you reproduce it? Could you, re like, you want to try to reproduce it on your own. It starts with fun, right? So concave up, right? If a function's concave up, well, it's going to be the U of fun. Concave down. So let's see if you can make it on your own. Then F prime and then F prime prime. So if something is concave up, then F prime is increasing. And f prime prime is positive. If something is concave down, then f prime is decreasing, and f prime prime is negative. You want to be able to try to make this on your own. So try it. Try it on your own to make this fun chart. And hopefully you were able to get it. 
Um, we're going to stop here for today. You've got some practice on your homework. Guys, um, we're going to have one fewer day than we would normally have to review this stuff because we're running into final exams. So make sure you are understanding the homework deeply, that you have ask any questions that you might have on the homework, um, and, and that you're all the way caught up because our final exam is coming up soon and we, we don't have a lot of extra time. Uh, so, you know, work hard, stay caught up, make sure you're understanding it all the way. Um, and I'll see you next class.